Are you, are you behind me? Come forward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jet, ah! Beardos, weirdos, balls and ghouls, how are we all doing? Hope you're all on a great day. I'm working my way through a list, a list of channels that people have told me to look at because they suspect them of fakery, because they believe they're legitimate and real, and because people just want to know what my thoughts are on certain channels. Well, today we are looking at Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations. I was asked on a live, one of my first lives, what do you think of Ghost Tech Paranormal? I was like, I think they're fake. I've seen other debunkers debunk them, and they seem to have way too much activity for my personal tastes. Shortly afterwards, I receive an email from somebody claiming to work for Ghost Tech Paranormal. Um, it was a lady, and this was, you know, over a year ago. But this person was like, um, Ghost Tech are not fake. I work for Ghost Tech. Signed off with, it, with the lady's name. But I can't link that lady's name to the channel, so I ignored it. And then I had another email basically asking me, would I work with Ghost Tech? to see how they work and all the rest of it. And I never responded because I was like, I don't think this is anyone actually to do with them. Maybe I'm being stitched up because, you know, there was a lot of people back then that were really pissed at me. But the name keeps coming up in lives. What about Ghost Tech Paranormal? What about Ghost Tech? And a lot of people seem to think these guys are fake. A lot of people seem to think that these guys are the real deal. Now, I haven't watched a ton of these stuff. I've only ever watched the clip. So we're going to take a proper look today. So this episode, I've picked it because it's the ancient Ram Inn somewhere I've always wanted to go and I've recently been had a very quiet night there were a few things but very quiet night so when people say things like you wouldn't know because you haven't been there well in this case I have I've been to the ancient ram in same as when people say oh what would you know about 30 East Drive I've been and I'm going again numerous times this year I'm going to the ancient ram in again because I'm fully aware you can't just go somewhere once not experience anything and say ah that's not haunted on the other side of it you can't turn up somewhere, experience one thing, and then say, yep, that's haunted. It's just not the way it works. So we're going to check out this episode. I've already watched the uh, 12 minutes, 25 minutes of an introduction. Normally, I would slate somebody for that, but this is really well done. It's a great introduction. There's lots of footage of the ancient Ram Inn. There's a brilliant, um, there's a brilliant voiceover with a very good history of the building. I actually really enjoyed it. There were some clips of their investigation at the beginning that have already set alarm bells ringing, though. So let's just get into it. If you want to see that really good introduction, then obviously go check out Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations, episode 124, The Ancient Ramin. And as I said, I picked this one because I've recently been there, and um, I didn't really experience anything. And if my stupid head gets in the way of the video at some point, I'm sorry actually so obviously i will trim down this video i can't just use these guys full episode which is why i haven't included the really good introduction let's see uh let's see how we go we have our static night vision cams in place static cam one is in the living room area static cam two is in the ground floor reception area static cam three is facing the mayflower barn Static Cam 4 is inside the Witch's Room. Static Cam 5 is in the Bishop's Room. The layout of these rooms has changed um, since these guys have been there. This is great. I would love to be able to have this many cameras on an investigation. But I like this. I like the, the multiple static cameras. It's a great idea. At this moment, as I ask the spirits to come and join us, there is movement from the attic that sounds like furniture being dragged across the floor. We do not have a static cam in this area, but our static cam below in the bishop's room is capturing the sounds. Here is the audio from the static cam in the bishop's room, followed by the audio enhanced. I know you're all thinking, ah, the one place you don't have a camera, and that's where the noises are coming from. Ooh, it's fake. We can't say that. I fully understand not being able to have enough equipment at a location. I only have three cameras. Only two of them are usable in night vision. So I completely get that. But it is something that could set some alarm bells ringing. But I'm not going to call that. I'm trying to be fair. Thank you. 
Okay, they've described that as a dragon sound, like somebody shifting something around up there. To me, that just sounds like somebody walking around up there. Now, they're saying they're all downstairs. This is recorded, you know, as they're sat downstairs. The Bishop's Room camera has picked this sound up. It doesn't sound like what they're describing. Does that mean it's fake? No. Um... I didn't. I did experience some weird knocks and bangs, some quite deep sounding thuds. There doesn't mean just because I didn't experience it that it's fake. But what they're describing is different to what I'm hearing. But there could be, you know, that could just be a difference of opinion. You can hear the creaking of what sounds like stairs to me. That sounds like somebody walking up wooden stairs. I don't think it's somebody walking up into the attic though, because you didn't hear that owl where they've smashed their head on the beam that I nearly knocked myself out on. We end our session in the living room area and make our way to the top floor where the attic is located, unaware of what has just taken place. And as we sit to start off the session, Phil and Mark hear a growling noise. Okay, so they haven't heard this noise, but they are going straight up into the attic, bypassing the two more famous rooms, the bishop's room and the witch's room. That doesn't make much sense to me, but I don't know, maybe they've got a plan of attack. It just seems a bit odd that they're going up there, passing two rooms that are more known for the paranormal activity, and they've gone past them to go into the attic that they haven't heard any noises from. Could just be me being picky, but that just seems a little off. Did anybody hear a growling noise then? Yes. I did. My house gone stood on end on the back. It was a growl. But I've got, growl. got this. I've got this on. Yeah. My house standing on end bad. Okay, when we've um, moved up into the attic area, and um, we've set up a couple of devices. We've got a. Uh, Why haven't they? Right, they've got static cameras. One of them is carrying a camera while they're walking around. They've got audio recorders on. They've heard a growl, and nobody captured it. They haven't replayed it. Motion detector at the top of the stairs. Um, so if anything comes up, that should hope. Ah, the old butt plug detector. Ah, uh, motion detector. They go off. I'm just having a laugh. We've also set up a music box pointing down towards um, the other end of the attic which is currently set up with, a, well, like a bedroom, I suppose. It's got a double bed in it. We brought up a K2 meter um, just to see if there was any changes in the electromagnetic field. And it's just off the scale. Um, I'll give you an example. I'll show you what happens. Um, if I turn it on... OK, we're getting readings up here um, there there isn't any power up here there is a light above us but it's not switched on oh dear i went in that attic i took a trifield meter into that attic and i had constant emf and it was from the lights in the ceiling this house wiring is so old that you get you get a couple of meters within some of the light fixtures and you're getting high emf you also got to take into account this house has or th this inn has a wi-fi a wi-fi router and everything downstairs there's a pc on the cctv everywhere as well all of which can impact your k2 now if they call this out if they call out this constant emf as a source of paranormal activity as opposed to bad wiring there's a problem now as well as that this EMF, I, I believe, in my opinion, this EMF is very natural. It's caused by the bad wiring, the CCTV and the broadband. As we all know, high EMF can cause auditory phenomena, hallucinations, visual disturbances, a sense of impending doom, a, a sense of being watched, paranoia. It can cause you to feel quite dizzy. So these guys may have experiences that they put down to paranormal, and it's just bad wiring. With these guys being called Ghost Tech, I hope that they call that out for what it is. Um, we've done a walk around and we can't find anything, but interestingly, if I actually move this a K2 meter up, it seems to be within the roof we're getting Getting readings to the point, and there's a light fixture above your head. Um, if my mouse shows, 
there may be a power cable running between the slats of the of the roof. Well, we can't really use this, and um, we're not sure why. Um, there's nothing nothing wrong with the device. Um, we've tested it, but just up here, um, yeah, it's it's going nuts. There is the possibility um, this property was built on ley lines, and it is um, suggested that. Um, on ley lines you get strange strange things happen with the magnetic fields well I'm, i don't really subscribe to that i've been to places that apparently sit on ley lines and not got any 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 readings on a k2 there are where i live some stone circles all in a line they line up all through the uk they're on ley lines nothing no emf i don't subscribe to that due to my own personal experience with it all seemed quiet up in the attic until we were just about to leave when this happens. Should we just... Should, should... Right. Just something worth noting. There. That is the IR ring of the CCTV. So they're saying they don't understand why the K2 is going off, why they're getting signals in the ceiling. There's light fixtures and CCTV wiring. To leave when this happens. Should we just, should, should we leave this stuff up here? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should come back. What? Jesus. Did you hear that? No. I heard. <laughs> I didn't. Where from? Oh, pink behind you. You made me bloody jump, Mark. That is so loud. If you, Jeff's recording, he's bound to have picked that up. Well, I've left the digital recorder. Jesus. It was like... Oh, somebody's stomach. Oh, that's made me feel. That's made me feel really odd. Should we just? Should Should we leave this stuff up here? Yeah. Yeah. I think we should come back. What? Jesus. <laughs> One of them sighed. You could tell it was them because it was right on the camera, and he's just gone. Jesus Christ! I just shoot her. <laughs> really? Somebody sighing, one of your guys, when... And this other guy has described it as... Oh dear. We have just jumped from three very chilled out guys doing a very chilled out investigation. I dare say a little bit boring, but investigations are boring and they're just leaving it as is. To a demonic growl, which is one of them sighing while moving with a camera in his hand. I was not expecting this. Did you hear that? No. I heard. No, you didn't. Where oh, from? F you heard. <sighs> behind you. You made me bloody jump, Mark. That is so loud. If you Jeff's recording, he's bound to have picked that up. Well, I've left the digital recorder. Jesus. Oh. It was like. That was the stomach. Right, at 22 minutes and 36 seconds in, this has taken a very different... I was not expecting this level of crap. That was clearly one of the stomach growls, and they knew it because nobody called it out. That was louder than the guy going... <sighs> as he's moving. That was a clear stomach growl, and they're claiming it to be... F and they're claiming it to be something else. Oh, that's made me feel... That's made me feel really odd. What did you hear, Mark? As you stood up... I heard all the noise I heard. It, uh, this is the only way I can describe it. It sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. You did. <sighs> like a a raspy growl, or or, or might, might have been a, someone shouting, but it was so loud from where that where the exit to that what is now the, what a bedroom is and the staircase. It come from it either come from the staircase or that bedroom behind you, but it's got to have been picked up. That was so loud. But it gave you a bit of... They were car doors slamming outside. I know that sound because I heard it when I was there. That guy that sat down there is full of shit. I'm sorry. Absolutely full of shit. It was clearly the other guy standing up and huffing as he stood up or sighing as he stood up. It was close to the camera and he's claimed it's come from the bedroom. Then none of them react to the stomach growling because they know what it is. But then they label it as growling in the video. Touch my hand. Come on. Oh, there was a flash of light. Oh, yeah. What was that? What the f was that? It was the um. It was a power light, wasn't it? Well, I, that's where it came from. 
I don't know what that power light is or how it works. I can't really comment on it. I just heard a voice. You did? Yeah, between you and me, yeah? Yeah. Like a little child's voice. It, yeah, it I heard, yeah, in yeah, part between, of fire. Between you and me. There is a bit of an issue with the ancient ramming, depending on the time of night. All of the windows are falling apart, rotten, and sound from the outside travels in. When Staffordshire Paranormal and I were in this room in particular, we kept hearing people outside. We heard a woman, I think she was quite drunk, being sick. We had kids shouting through the windows at us, and that just sounded like somebody outside talking to me. And the issue that I'm having is, being Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations, they haven't investigated that sound. They, they still just sat there. Whereas myself and Staffordshire Paranormal, we started hearing noises. We went upstairs to look out of the windows to see if there was anyone around because we were hearing thumping and we were like, could it be a car door? Whilst up there, there's a split second where you see the three of our heads snap and then I shout, go on, cough it up because you can hear somebody, I think, being sick outside. And at various points in the night, we heard very real people outside making noises and it just bleeds through this house so loud. Between Phil and I, beside the fireplace, we hear a disembodied voice of a child, but we cannot decipher what is being said. Here is the enhanced audio taken from Mark's digital recorder. Just heard a voice. Yeah. Between you and me, yeah? Yeah. Like a little child's voice. Yeah. Was, I heard, yeah, in yeah, part between, of fire. Between you and me. Just heard a voice. Yeah. Between you and me, yeah? Yeah. Like a little child's voice. Yeah. Was, I heard. The other problem with this is he's got a digital recorder there. These two guys are sat pretty much looking from this camera where I am and to my left. I heard the noise from behind all three of them in the direction this guy is looking. That noise, to me, came from outside. I could be wrong. Maybe they've caught it. Um, Whatever digital recorder they're using here, the settings are set so sensitive on it, you can hear a gnat fart. You can hear all of the just ambient noise of that house tenfold. Um, You can't put much stock in that. The original voice the, the camcorders picked up was more impressive, but it just sounded like somebody walking past outside talking. They are focusing on this because it sounds creepier. Yeah, in part of fire. Between you and me. The Ouija brothers have recently done an investigation where they hear voices. So what do they do? Do they just sit there, carry on filming and discussing? No, they try to move to where the voices are coming from and then they're like, that's somebody outside. Wait, there's a dog barking. There's somebody here. They go outside and check. They look out of windows to check. they like, you know, there's somebody around here. They're not just claiming it's a disembodied child's voice like these are good. these guys are doing. We move on through a small hallway to what is known as the witch's room, where in the 1500s a witch named Mary Gibbons hid from the witch hunters but was eventually found and burnt at the stake. The apparition of Mary has been seen on multiple occasions inside the room. Okay, so I've gone online to look at Mary Gibbons because that was a name that I've only ever heard through paranormal investigation channels. And normally if you put in something like Mary Gibbons at the ancient Ram Inn or, or whoever at whichever the haunted, haunted location, the first things that come up normally are a couple of ghost channels and then you'll get some historical art articles and there's nothing. Nothing at all. Historical. You know, without doing a deep dive... It doesn't see that that story doesn't appear to be real. Anything at all. What's the matter, Phil? The chair just moved. Your chair moved? Yes. Right on cue. Ace. That's weird. I just seen a black shadow by you to your right hand side, Phil, on the wall. Is that you, Mary? I'm sitting back down. If it was, thank you for that. So you moved up. Uh... Right, that was people talking outside. He's just claimed his chair moved. If you can't shout out, can you move something inside this room for us, please? Anything at all. What's the matter, Phil? The chair just moved. Could you move something for us, please? My chair just moved. The problem is, the only sound that we hear was him moving and then saying the chair moved. Inside this room for us, please. 
anything at all. Smart Phil. I don't know about that. My chair just moved. Your chair moved? Yes. Right on cue. Hey. You're a paranormal investigator. You ask for something to move, and the thing you're sat on moves, and you just slowly stand up, turn around, and go, my chair just moved. Ace. Really? Even the more, most staunch sceptic would be a bit like, ooh, something just happened. That's weird. I just seen a black shadow by you to your right hand side, Phil, on the wall. Right, this guy's got a camera on him, seen a black shadow move. So we're going to have this chair move and this shadow figure on camera. We must have, because this guy's looking at him and has claimed to have seen it. Is that you, Mary? Where's the replay? If it was, thank you for that. Where's the replay? That's people talking outside. So you moved uh, Phil's chair. Is there anything that we can do for you? Please. Phil's chair moves and then there is running outside on the stairs. Here is the audio enhanced. This guy claims to have seen a shadow alongside him when the chair moved. He's looking in the wrong direction. Maybe this is just a mistake in their editing. But he appears to be looking the wrong way. They don't show his camera angle or nothing. These claims are, are just bullshit. The sounds that they are hearing are clearly people having a conversation walking past outside. And they are claiming that as the staircase moving inside. This is bullshit. So you moved uh, Phil's chair. Is there... Anything that we can do for you? So you moved uh, Phil's chair. Is there anything that we can do for you? That is not running on those stairs. Those stairs are very creaky, very noisy. You can hear the floorboards creaking. You hear the wood creak. That is not that sound. That sounds like somebody jogging on the spot on carpet. There were clearly people just outside talking as they walked past. They've omitted that bit and just gone to this weird knocking sound, which to me sounds like somebody walking up carpeted stairs or a carpeted floor. And, you know, can I prove it? No, but I think that's overlaid. Their reactions are just not there for the levels of activity they get in. His chair was moved. Oh. Cool. And then they're claiming that you hear somebody walking up a very creaky old wooden staircase and it sounds like they're walking on carpet. These guys are lying. Can you hear me, Mary? I ask Mary if she can hear me and the digital recorder picks up an angry voice replying back to me. They knew that noise was coming from outside. He's looking out of the window. He knows full well that noise came from outside. And now they're going to play that god-awful digital recorder to amp up the very natural sounds of people walking past and talking. It happens the entire time you're there. We dismiss most of what we heard in this building. I've even left in my investigation. I even let a, leave a bit in for comedy value because it's clearly somebody being sick or coughing their guts up. Can you hear me, Mary? How does that sound angry? That is literally somebody talking as they walk past outside. We heard it much better on the other camera. Now you've got this god-awful EVP recorder. And I don't rate EVPs. I'm sorry. But if your EVP recorder makes things sound much different to what your microphone and your camera sounds, you're trying to bullshit us. That is people walking past. We heard it until like 11, 12 p.m. at night that night. And now you're just putting it on a shit recorder and making it seem like it's a ghost. I have seen this in their introduction. Something really funny happens with this guy, and it is funny because it's bullshit. Now, they set up their equipment, three different cameras. This guy sat in a chair. Watch the little build-up to this. Focus on these two in the background. He's handing him something. It's a piece of equipment. That's not what I'm looking at. Watch the body language between this two and the way he's sitting facing the doorway which will activate if any movement is detected 
Phil and I will take a seat in the living room area. Did that look like something was being a little bit planned there? Right, there's a recorder. We needed to do. We needed to do, and he almost makes this action, as if to say, "You'll be safe go falling backwards." Just my opinion. But what's the fall anyway? Because it's comedy gold. He's been in here a while. I've watched it all, and he's just calling out. Um, he asks, "Is this the band? Did you used to have animals in here, or is it just for storage?" I imagine over time, both. Just saying. Can you copy me? Can you speak so I can hear you with my ears? As opposed to hearing it with your eyes. <laughs> it feels like there's something behind me. So, my hair. Are you are you behind me? Come forward. <laughs> oh, <s> <laughs> Jet ah. He's grinning. This guy was grinning. He knew he was coming. Jeff! Oh, f what he's, was it? Someone, someone pulled me off the chair. He's pushed himself back. You see him launch himself back with his feet. They've got three camera angles. This should be great. Oh, s***. Got, got my shoulder in. Where's the music box going? Oh, what the f***? The music box was going before I got here as well. Yeah. The music box was going before Jeff got there, because whoever this guy is was already in the door. One of three ancient ram in a piss that you just broke the chair throwing yourself about on it. Mark gets pulled back and the music no, box activates and picks up movement as if something or someone has passed and left the barn area. Here is the footage again, taken from all three angles. Feels like there's something behind me, so my hair. Are you, are you behind me? Come forward. Ah, oh, s <laughs> you, see his, you see his feet do this movement and then he moves. He's pushed himself backwards over the back of his chair. Jeff! Ah! Jeff! Oh, someone pulled, someone pulled me. And the music box is going, yeah, as this guy comes around the corner. These sensors on these things, uh, they go quite far. This guy has obviously come around the corner off camera. That has picked him up and started going, but they're claiming it was something leaving the room after throwing him off his chair. This is dog shit. These guys are apparently quite high and mighty about how real they are. This is... This is most haunted levels of bullshit, but really boring in between. This is not enjoyable. This is fake. 100% fake. Get me off the chair. You liars! I don't know how anyone could have watched that section of footage and not seen him throw himself back out of his chair. Absolutely ridiculous. We return to the top floor, where the attic is located to try to communicate with what we encountered earlier during the investigation. They've got three rooms that they claim are really haunted, and they spend very little time in them. But the attic, they've got to go back there because of a stomach growl and somebody going, ah, as he stood up. Make yourself known. That was banging from downstairs. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's loud. It's bottles. That's bottles. It sounds like a chair being dragged. It, it's wood on stone by the sound of it. Bottles are very, you know, like the clinking sound of bottles. That's not what we're hearing. Make yourself known. <laughs> that was banging from downstairs. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's loud. It's bottles. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure where in the UK you guys are from or what century you're from, but bottles tend to be made out of glass. That doesn't sound like somebody kicking a cardboard box. Had you been hiding up here long? Well, I just saw something over there. I, I, honestly, it looked like a face that flickered 
like a, almost like a face lit up momentarily. Crazy. Anyone, anyone else on the planet sees a face in an attic where they shouldn't be is going to have a bit more of a reaction to, oh, I've just saw a face. And they may go, cool. This is awful. Truly awful. That was quite bizarre. Is that you trying to show yourself to us? I'm not expecting them to be running about and screaming and jumping because I hate that. But this half asleep... Oh, I saw a face. Illuminating. And somebody else going, cool. If they're experiencing all of this paranormal activity in this reportedly very haunted house, why are they not excited? Why do they look bored out of their skin? Why are they bored out of their minds? And why am I bored out of my mind? And as we enter... A figure is captured sitting in a chair for only a couple of seconds before. SLS is not meant to be moved. Picking up the spindles as a humanoid. We're now in Ghost Adventures territory. Uh, the spindles on this chair on an SLS is not meant to be moved. They are moving. It's picked up the spindles, tried to make a human shape out of it. And yeah, that's what that is. And they've claimed it. As um, a figure sat in a chair, paranormal. What was it? The spirit of a toddler sat on the wrong side of a chair? Okay, so I actually made it at the end of that investigation for my sins. So that is my first full episode of Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations. Um, I've watched a guy throw himself out of a chair. You can see his feet clearly throw him back and claim that a ghost has pushed him. Somebody comes in to check on him and they claim that the spirit has set off a motion detector music box when it's clearly the guy that's walked into the room. I've heard voices from outside that I heard while I was there that they have claimed to be paranormal. It's clearly not. I've heard them describe somebody breathing out while they stand up as a demonic growl. This was truly awful. And I know these guys are held in high regard by some people. And I know these guys think quite highly of themselves. But this, it was shit. There was nothing in there that couldn't be easily explained either by very natural sounds or these guys faking everything. When I see somebody literally plant their feet into the floor, dig their toes in and push themselves back, and then no panic, oh, Jeff, I've just been thrown out of a chair. Or, Jeff, my chair's just been moved, but we didn't hear a movement, any sound until you got up. When you have those types of things happen that are quite substantial and you have no reaction to it at all, and when you're claiming that you're tummy rumbling or a guy huffing as he stands up are legitimate demonic activity or paranormal activity, it's quite easy to write off the entire thing as completely fake. Now, I've been to this place. I investigated there. I stayed there overnight. Most of the sounds we got, we worked out where they came from. You made no attempt to look out of the windows that you sat right next to to make sure that's not where the voices were coming from. And the reason you didn't do that is you knew you'd see people walking around outside. And then you just play some really bad EVP footage over the top of it and go, see, it's a ghost. Look how demonic that sounds. It's not demonic, it's distorted. So for everyone that keeps asking, my opinion on Ghost Tech Paranormal Investigations? Absolutely full of it. Not only was there far more activity in there than any other team I've ever seen there, it was the type of activity you don't see other teams get in. Even the fake ones. These guys got more. And despite the fact that somebody was apparently pulled out of a chair, a chair was almost pulled out from someone, all of these ghostly voices and phenomena and... The really high EMF that is clearly the CCTV and the lights in the attic because I checked it when I was there. It was boring. How can you have a 46, sorry, a 48 minute video, all of that activity inside of it, and it be boring? They didn't react to anything properly. Everything that happened is like, Jeff, I can pull out my chair. Jeff, I've just been growled at. There's no excitement. There's no nothing. And no, I don't want people running around screaming and shouting and all the rest of it but when you're getting levels of activity like this and you sound bored your viewers are bored and you're bored because you're faking it you're just going through the motions of trying to make it look like this place is haunted it's the ancient ram in be honest if nothing happens nothing happens nobody will judge you for not capturing anything there and instead of that what you did was fake things and then claim that very ordinary things were paranormal outside of the norm this was truly awful. And because of the level of bullshit that I've just seen in this, we're going to bring something new to these episodes. Something I've been looking to add for quite some time. 
Ghost Tech Paranormal. You just made the bullshit list. This list will be updated every time I watch a video. Any channel I think is fake, they get added to this list. So I'll have to do new videos on all the channels I've already done just to add them to this list in the interest of fairness. <laughs> so guys, do please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Obviously, don't go over to the channel giving hate and all the rest of it. I'll give them credit where credit is due. Their introduction was fantastic. The uh, history of the place was fantastic. I don't know if it was right or wrong. Probably wrong. But yeah, the investigation itself, to have that much activity and have the cheek to be boring, just shit. And then throwing yourself out of chairs and claiming the tummy rumbles and stuff. Absolutely awful. So leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are there a team you want me to look at to add to the list? And even if I've done them before, mention them. Because I'm going to get around them all and I'm going to be adding to this list. And then obviously to counteract that. There's a good list. It's not going to be written down. It's not going to have a comedic pen click. Those channels that I find interesting, that I find to be legitimate investigators, not pulling the wool over people's eyes, they're going to be in a playlist because they deserve that. Whereas this debunk list, absolutely awful. Much love to you all. Beardo, out.